Since 2015, a Saudi-led coalition has been waging a war against the Houthi rebels in Yemen, unleashing one of the most severe humanitarian crises in recent history. But who are the Houthis? The Houthis make up around 25% of Yemen's population. Although they belong to the Shia sect of Islam, they are Zaydis. They follow a branch that's different to the Twelver Shia Islam, the dominant practice in Iran, Iraq, and Lebanon. Zaydis take their name from Zayd ibn Ali, the great grandson of Ali who was killed in an uprising. Zayd is revered as a leader that fought against a corrupt regime. The Zaydi believe that it is their religious duty to fight against unjust rulers. That contrasts with most Sunni and Shia doctrines that usually encourage unity over disorder. For a thousand years, Zaydis have lived in the mountains of former northern Yemen in what is present-day Saada province bordering Saudi Arabia. In 1978, Ali Abdullah Saleh, a Zaydi, came to power in former North Yemen. Twelve years later, North Yemen and South Yemen were united into one country. Saleh's rule lasted until 2011. In the late 80s, Saudi-funded Salafi institutes were established in the north of Yemen with state support. This made Zaydis feel marginalized. They responded by trying to revive their religion and culture under the leadership of Hussein Badruddin al-Houthi, and the Houthi movement was born. But it was the 2003 war in Iraq that made the group more politically active. The Houthis opposed the US-led invasion of Iraq. Hussein al-Houthi began criticizing Saleh calling him a US-backed dictator. When some Houthis protested in mosques in the capital Sana'a, Saleh tried to crack down on the movement by sending troops to arrest Hussein al-Houthi. This triggered the first armed conflict between the government and the Houthis. Hussein al-Houthi was killed in 2004, and his brother, Abdel Malik al-Houthi, took over. Saudi Arabia backed the government, and despite religious differences, Iran began supporting the Houthis. The Houthi movement accepted Iran's support, but resisted direct interference. For the Iranians, the Houthis being a counterforce to Saudi interests was enough. The Houthis achieved initial military success, which provoked more Saudi-backed government force. The parties then reached a ceasefire agreement in 2010. A year later, when the Arab Spring reached Yemen, the Houthis were one of many groups calling for Saleh to step down. And when he did, the Houthis joined a national dialogue. But they were unhappy with the outcome, as it would reduce their territorial autonomy. The new president, Abdurrabu Mansur Hadi, also backed by the Saudis, had trouble stabilizing the country. He couldn't stop Al-Qaeda attacks, and fuel prices and unemployment began to skyrocket. This provoked a new rebellion. This time the Houthis allied with their once sworn enemy, former President Saleh, who still had military forces loyal to him. By 2015, Houthi rebels had toppled the government and gained control of Yemen's major cities. When they entered Sana'a, they rebranded themselves as Ansar Allah, or the helpers of God, and opened air traffic between Tehran and Yemen, promising cheap oil. Across the northern border, Saudi Arabia's king Salman bin Abdul Aziz ascended the throne and saw the Houthis as a dangerous and an important pawn in the proxy war against Iran. Saudi Arabia formed a coalition with other Arab states backed by the US, UK, and France and began strikes on the Houthis. Despite this, three years later, the Houthis still control large parts of the country, and the war has been costly. More than 10,000 people have been killed, and almost 2 million children under the age of 5 are considered acutely malnourished.